Hey guys, today's video I want to show you a super easy way to get some nice high poly wood detail. This will help give your models that extra dimension of realism. So I have a gun butt here that I modelled a while ago and I thought this would be a perfect use case for this technique. So if I select the butt and these objects and press shift H and isolate the butt because this is all we're going to be focusing on in this video. Um, in fact, I could probably hide the rest as well. So let's just keep this. Now, if we review this, this object here, I'll show the topology. And as you can see, the topology is not that good. I created this using box modeling techniques, and then I used box cutter just to cut in some shapes and to get the basic shape down. Now, for us to be able to sculpt on this, we want to have it have even quads and, you know, half decent topology. And as you can see, we have really long faces here and some, some quads are different sizes to other quads. And ideally you don't really want this. So what we want to do is we want to remesh this to give it a better even topology. So if I go over to my modifiers panel, let me apply the mirror. Now, oops, first of all, let's apply the boolean. Now, the thing is we don't want the bevel. If we're going to remesh it, we might as well remove the bevel because remeshing I find doesn't really work too well with bevels. So remove the bevel. Now we've applied the mirror. So great. So this is our basic object here. So we now need to remesh this and there's, there's a couple of ways we can do this. You can do it manually, but in this video, we're just going to use the auto, automate, automatic methods. So there's two ways of doing that. The first is if we come here and we go to our object properties. So we select here. Now we have a remesh tab where we can select the remesh and we can choose either voxel or quad and you have the different different options to be honest i never really use this remesh i have quad remesher which i find is a lot more easy for me to control and just gives me better results to be honest so sorry but in this video i'm going to be using quad remesher um definitely check it out it's it's like one of my go-to add-ons so what i would go and do is i would first of all i'd look at this and i'd say I'd want to, to aid quad remesher in how it's going to give the loop. So if we put it on a default, so let's just say we give it 12,000 and remesh it. Let's see what happens. As you can see, not, not too bad results. Um, I don't really like this and I certainly don't like this here. So what it needs is it needs a helping hand. So how I would fix this, I'd undo that. Now I would come to my materials. I'd create a new material, see what we're doing, go into my face. I would want this section here to be a, a loop there, so I'd assign a color. Great. Oh, select these two down here, assign a color. I would then select this. I'd give that a separate color and same here. I've sped this section up a bit just because you don't want to see me adding colors to all the different faces. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff, really, just selecting different edges and adding um, material colors there. I created a new loop just because I wanted to add the color loop around it and to give it a bit more control over where that loop was going to be. Cleaning up some of the geo as I go along as well. Now that I'm happy with my material guides, these will aid remesher in placing loops where I want them. Make sure user materials is selected with a quad count of 12,000, adaptive size 50%, and I'll turn off adaptive quad count. Let's test it. Mm, not too bad, not too bad. I'm not really too happy about this here. So let's undo that. <clears throat> let's give an adapter size of 100, see what happens. Mm. Yeah, I think. To be honest, that's not too bad. That will do. So now. Oh, wait, we have a bug here. So let's undo. Let's put, let's put adaptive quad on. Remesh. 
And yeah, I think that will, that will do for, for a base sculpt layer. So before we start, let's review how we're going to tackle this. It's quite simple, really. First, we're going to cover the whole shape of a basic wood texture that we find online. Then we're going to use the fantastic ore brushes created by Mikel Vincent. And these brushes really help give the wood that unique detail that helps sell the story. And by the way, these brushes can be used for literally anything. And as always, the links will be in the description. So let's start with adding uh, the basic wood texture. So we come to textures.com, type in wood. You can get your textures from anywhere, but I just find this site really easy and has some good wood textures. So find one that you'd like. I quite like this one here. Yeah, this looks like it's got some, some cool details. Uh, you need it to create an account. You can create a free account and then you can download up to medium size um, size files. With this here, it just saves us having to do it in Photoshop. So I just click this, um, download, download to TIFF. So now if I come to Blender, let's go to our sculpting. Just turn off the, okay. something like that. Let's see my geo, that's cool. And now I'll add the multi res, subdivide it a couple of times, give it some nice geometry to work with. Let's test it by dragging our mouse over it. Maybe one more subdivide again. So we're on the, the fourth level of subdivision, which is. Whoops. Three million polys. Yeah, I think that's enough detail to do what we want. Okay, great. So now we come to our brush. Texture. New. Down here. Open. Go to my downloads. That's the texture there. Open image. and select stroke we want it to be anchored let's do an edge to edge and let's test it no we don't that's not right so it's, it looks like it's tiling so turn off tiling view plane again go to stroke anchored There we go. Now we just want to drag, get some basic um, wood texture in that we're going to go and refine afterwards. So this is just almost like, and we're just dragging. This is all going to be dialed down as well. So you don't need to be too careful at this moment in time. You're just trying to add some sort of like breakup basically. It's a shame because I wish Blender had a sculpt layers feature like ZBrush where we could just add alphas onto a layer and then dial it down. So as you can see, I'm not being too careful here or too accurate. I'm just basically just getting a base down. Obviously, I mean, you want to keep in the wood panels all going in, in or the wood lines almost all going in the same way. You don't want some going up, some going down. Try and keep it consistent. Yeah, I think that's looking good. That will do for the time being. Um, once you have downloaded the ore brush set, you need to append the file. So extract all the files onto a folder. I've actually done it onto my desktop. So I've got um, basically a folder on my desktop with um, this here. So what you need to do is you need to go file, append, and let me go to my desktop, orb. Or brushes append then it opens up a new folder where you come into the brush select all the ones with the a and that line so shift select these append okay great so now I should have here we go so now I have all these brushes here so now this is where the magic happens so if I select for example this one here just drag it out 
And now the trick is we want to be thinking about if this was if this weapon was constantly taking dents and and falls and stuff, it would be getting all these like scratching scratching lines like round these sort of edges. So again, you just want to keep dragging out and be quite. Just to add like a little more, just gives it that sort of level of detail. So then you just go around so I've sped it up a bit here so as you can see that I'm just dragging along and smoothing bits out just trying to think where you know these these scratches and dents can potentially happen trying to keep it relatively smooth in the middle um, going around all the edges almost like an occlusion map really just going around and just scratching up all the edges doing some bigger scratches you know that I'll, I'll dial down soon some thinner ones as well just to give it give it some variety as you can see the wood's starting to come along now and I mean this is a short video but what you can do is you can go in and just really get in on the details and you know really add give give those those scratches and those dents some uniqueness by you know blocking out the shapes and stuff i find a pinch is a good way to kind of like thin out the lines make it look a bit more organic and that's about it really um uh, I know the result could be slightly better, but I didn't want this to be, you know, a three hour video. So uh, hopefully this gives you guys just something to, to experiment with and play around with, because I do think it does give good results, especially if you want to go in and spend a lot of time really fine tuning the detail. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, peace.